So by Christmas, there was no end in sight to the strike. And it's interesting because virtually every outside party thought that my management was being too stubborn. The governor uh, and other outside people had come in and tried to talk to Jim McNaughton and tried to talk to other mine managers. Look, just sit down and talk to them. You don't have to listen to them. Woodward Ferris actually said, I'd sit down and talk to the devil. I wouldn't have to agree with him, but I'd talk to him if he wanted to talk to him. So Jim McNaughton said, no, talking to them is admitting we've got a right to exist. And that was the common position at the time. So with the strike at an absolute standoff on Christmas Eve, the Western Federation of Miners Women's Auxiliary, led by Big Annie, decided to hold a party for the children of the strike of miners. Now, we're going to actually have two events that night, I guess. The primary one was for the children. So otherwise, think about it. It's not going to be a really great Christmas. Your parents have been out of work since July, um, and the strike benefits aren't being paid. And so what's, what's it going to be like for the kids? So they announced that on Christmas Eve, early afternoon, going to be a party at the Italian Hall. The Italian Hall is a very well-known meeting place for the Union. Uh, it's the kind of place we have such a party. Um, in fact, I suspect it was a lot like this room here, stage at one end, uh, windows facing the street, except that there would be stadium or auditorium seating up here. These chairs would be bolted to the floor, and in the back would be folding chairs and um, like tables and so on. So in the early afternoon, people started riding. They go up that steep staircase. And one of the myths about the Italian Hall is whether or not the doors open the wrong way. And I know that, that there's people who disagree with me on this, but the doors had nothing to do with the disaster. A bigger factor is the fact that it was a single staircase, a single flight of stairs from the lower floor to the upper floor. And it's a 14 foot rise between floors. It's a very, very oddly designed staircase. And nowadays, modern building codes do not let you build a 14 foot staircase without breaking it in half and putting a landing in the middle. But in 1913, you were allowed to. So you, you climb this extremely steep, long staircase, and you come up to this landing at the top. This photograph was taken by, I think, Charlie Eschbach in 1984 before the building was torn down. So it's, uh, you'll notice it's quite dirty, and the building's about to get demolished. But this is the landing at the top of the stairs. There's a ticket room, booth, window, and a set of double swinging doors. And if you step through those doors, st uh, stage on your left, windows on your right, and there were possibly six or seven hundred people who came to the party that day. We don't know how many were in the hall at the moment that the tragedy took place, but there were quite a few who passed through the hall. Some had already gone home for the evening. But the place was so crowded and so loud because it was like this, except that you know it had a tin ceiling, but no sound insulation or anything like that. And there were, among the crowd, eight or nine children for every adult. So a lot of adults bring their own children and their neighbor's children. There are a lot of stories like that where somebody bring a bunch of kids, some of their own kids and somebody else's kids. And you have hundreds of children, hundreds of adults. There was actually testimony there were people who were so annoyed by the sound level in the hall that they had stepped out on the landing. Some people were actually sitting in the ticket booth just to get out of the noise. And some of them testified specifically about, I did that because it was so loud in there, I couldn't hear anything or understand anything. And of course, there's also groups of people in there in different languages. So a group of Finns be over here talking, a group of Italians talking, and so on. So about 4.40 in the afternoon, give or take a few minutes, a man came into the building, walked up the stairs, stepped through those doors, and yelled the word fire in English language twice, very, very loudly. He yelled it loud enough to make sure that caught on, and if you do that, people will repeat the cry. So he yells fire, people nearby yell fire. Some people would take it and translate it into their own language. So if you were Croatian, you might repeat the cry fire in Croatian, and so on. But there were a good number of witnesses near the doors who said, I saw a man come in from the outside, he yelled fire, and then he went back out. Uh, people near the stage, some of them said they heard the cry, but it was obviously being repeated. And some people on the stage, like Big Annie was on the stage at the moment the cry fire went up. And she said specifically, she didn't see who first raised it because she wasn't looking that way. But she obviously became aware of it very quickly. Pandemonium broke out. A lot of people start screaming and yelling. And human nature instinct is that you will try to get out of the building the way you came in. So if you all panic right now, your first instinct is to run to those doors. Because that's how you came in. 
Most people in that building, if you tell you, I'll try to come back out these doors, also because the fire escape and the ladder in the back of the building were not marked. Most people did not know there's another way out of the building. What happens is if you come through these doors and make a hard left, you can't see where you're going until it's too late because there's a wall forming a hallway down to the coat room that's off camera here. You turn the corner, and as people were heading down the stairs, somebody tripped and fell. Other people from coming behind are pushing, shoving, and of course, once you get to the top of the stairs and realize you shouldn't go forward, you'd like to stop, but the person behind you is pushing. So the first person trips and falls on the stairs, and a pileup forms on the stairs. The pile of people on the stairs didn't reach the doors. The first people to show up were uh, firemen who said they got there, they could open the doors, but they couldn't help the people from underneath. They had to go back around and get them to the top. So very, very quickly it happened, about 4.45 in the afternoon, and very, very quickly it stopped because people soon realized that there was no fire, and no reason to get out, and in fact there was a pileup on the stairs. So this is a photograph taken by William Nara, who's a photographer of Calumet. He uh, was a portrait photographer and uh, there have been books written about just his photography. And he went out on Christmas Day, 1913, and photographed, and then also a few days later, many of the things of the strike and documented them. And then many of them he made into stereo view cards. And this is a half of a stereo view card. You notice the bottom has a subtitle of Finnish, uh, clearly speaking to the Finnish community. In the stairwell, there were probably 100 or so people jammed, 73 people at least who died. 59 of them were children. More than half of them were Finnish, or of Finnish descent. Um, but you'll notice that, for instance, there's a Christmas tree on the right-hand side of the stage. There's a piano on the left. And um, on the far right of the stage is a doorway. And at the moment the cry of fire went up, the children had been told to line up along that wall. And they would then take turns going up on stage and going across and getting their candy or whatever stockings and then come back over here and then exit the doorway on the far left. And that's the process they were going through at the moment that the cry of fire went up. But you also notice there's a lot of disarray here. Chairs knocked over. There's an abandoned baby carriage in the middle there on runners and so on. And the doors to get out of the hall are over on the far left. But that speaks to the level of confusion in the hall and the amount of chaos that went up with the cry of fire. <coughs> 